Our Titan X Pascal hybrid project is complete. That's what this is here now with a liquid cooler attached to it and the blower fan. And the results are actually pretty interesting. This shows the biggest change out of all of the hybrid cards we've built so far, including the 1080, 480, and 1060. This one, actually the results very directly impact performance, clock rates, and things like that. And the conclusion is basically that the cooler on here uh, is not adequate for, for what we were doing. And we'll talk about that in a moment. This coverage is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC, which has the Arc LED fans, a full tempered glass side window, and underglow if you want to have neons like in Need for Speed Underground 2. So the hybrid card, pretty interesting stuff. Uh, we cataloged, chronologued the last uh, build process in the last couple of videos. You can see how we tore it down, built it up. And today we're looking at the results. The methodology is in the article linked in the description below. You can also find more depth there if you're curious. And a quick shout out to Sam. Thank you for loaning us this card because NVIDIA did not sample this one to us, though they sampled the rest of the cards recently. During our endurance test, we plotted the Titan XP with its stock cooler as throttling at 84 Celsius. Every hit to 84C caused an immediate drop in clock rate, and the clock rate got stuck around 1544 megahertz but sometimes it spike to 1670 or drop as low as the 1400s. The spec calls for a 1531 megahertz boost on paper, and the chart makes it pretty clear that our clock rate is spiking hard, and it's a result of the thermals, not the power limit in this instance, but it's still within the spec. We occasionally spiked to 85 or 86 Celsius, but the card mostly throttles hard to keep itself at 83 Celsius. Here's a look at some raw data to see what's going on. You can see that the clock has a range around 100 megahertz top to bottom, which definitely presents itself in 0.1% low values if you happen to hit a spike during workloads. Putting that into perspective, the original chart plots us at hovering around the 1500 megahertz to 1580 megahertz range kind of averaged with an 84C temperature. With our hybrid mod, we brought the Titan X Pascal up to nearly 1800 megahertz. That's with absolutely no overclock at all. On average, we're moving from 1531 megahertz or thereabouts on the stock cooler to an average of about 1784 megahertz with the liquid cooler. We've improved the clock rate of the stock card by more than 200 megahertz just by fixing its air cooler. And this next part's even better. The only reason we're still seeing that spiky frequency plot is because the card is now choking on power rather than thermals. It's almost funny in that way. We've resolved the thermal constraint and are now hitting power constraints, which can be somewhat resolved and tested simply by increasing the power limit of the card. You don't even have to overclock it, so that would resolve this and flatten the clock rate even a little bit more. Here's an updated look at the peak average temperatures. We're down to a delta T versus ambient value of 19.85 Celsius from 59.4 Celsius, or a reduction of 40 C for the load temperature. Idle temperatures are a little lower than the 1080, and that's for a few reasons. It actually does make sense, despite maybe being confusing at first because this is a higher TDP chip. The main one is that the die size is 471 millimeters squared on the GP102 Titan X, whereas GP104 is 314 millimeters squared. This extra surface area helps dissipate heat, and that's mostly noticeable when it's idle, because uh, not doing anything, obviously. But the improved air cooler for the air tests and our improved implementation of liquid for the hybrid tests also contributes to the lower idle temperature across the board than the 1080. And part of that is keeping the base plate this time, which helps drive down thermals across the card. We were able to overclock higher end with a greater sustained average clock rate than before, thanks to the improved thermal solution. Still, the Titan XP chokes hard on power availability and is demonstrated by the fact that increasing the memory clock beyond 450 megahertz will actually decrease FPS. And that's because power is being eaten away from the core. We actually gained more FPS by dropping the memory overclock from its actually stable 600 megahertz offset value to a 450 megahertz value that we settled with for the original non-modified card. That seems to be the point beyond which diminishing returns come into play. So once you've passed that 450 mark on this particular card, there are diminishing returns insofar as the frame rate will actually decrease. And that's again, because core frequency goes down. Regardless, our overclock stepping is on the screen now. We landed at 2012 megahertz peak, that's the very highest, or about 1974 megahertz resting clock with the hybrid card. The stock card, by comparison with a loud and high RPM fan, was getting stuck at about 175 megahertz core offset for a total of 1987 megahertz peak or 1911 megahertz average. We've managed to decrease thermals, noise, and increase the overclock by about 63 megahertz. It's not a huge OC, but there's more to it than just numbers. We've also got to look at stability 
and now that the thermals are not throttling on the card, it's down to just the power limit. As for FPS differences, we see a change of less than 3% in Shadow of Mordor at 1080p and 4K, moving from 91 FPS average to 93 FPS average, but the 0.1% low values have been improved from 62 to 71 FPS as a result of the more stable clock rate. That's not super noticeable to the gamer at this level of performance anyway, but it is cool to see our methodology picking up the clock rate instability and actually showing where it shines to measure those low values. Looking at GTA 5, we see a performance swing of nearly 4% and the average is at 4K. 1080p doesn't really show any real change, but the 0.1% lows are marginally improved, again, imperceptibly, but measurably. Mirror's Edge Catalyst posts the biggest swings with a change of about 5% at 1440p and about 6% at 4K high. So not massive, but overall the performance of the card has certainly increased and part of that is just a better overclock and most of it is the better clock rate stability. So that is the Titan XP hybrid project. Really cool results on this one just to kind of see how it performs. Nvidia I think should have used a better cooler whether that's liquid maybe by kind of the stock configuration would, would make sense for a $1,200 video card. Uh, if they're trying to make it so that it's more compatible with a wider range of cases, SFF and all of that, then just a better air cooler would make sense because this is very obviously throttling even in its stock configuration. So pre-OC, we're changing the clock rate by something like 100 to 200 megahertz just by changing the cooler. And that's because this thing, when it's under auto control for the fan, is hitting 84, 85 Celsius. Now, if you were to configure the fan manually to something like 100% speed and endure the, the extra noise, then you would resolve some of these thermal issues with the stock card. But 100% noise on one of these blower fans does get a bit loud and really when you just throw better cooling on it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do. Again, especially because it's an expensive card. So why, why not do a default push fan setup or something like that? I know it kind of breaks the NVIDIA aesthetic. This is only sold on NVIDIA's website right now to my understanding. I don't think there'll be partner cards. There might be a few from EVGA like with the Titan X Maxwell, but that would be about the most I would expect. So uh, exclusivity does ruin the cooling potential of this a bit because there's not gonna be as many AIB partner models, if any at all, with the push fans, with liquid coolers, things like that, to resolve the thermal throttling points of 84, 85 Celsius. But this fixed it. So and in the very least, there's a cool proof of concept. This card will now be going back to Sam, who loaned it to us for review. Uh, he's one of our viewers, not NVIDIA. They didn't sample it. So thank you, Sam, for that. Hopefully, if we, uh, if we do any modifications before sending it back, we'll do a quick Twitter post or something. So follow us at GamersNexus on Twitter, subscribe, check us out on Patreon in the post drill video or links in the description below if you want to help us out directly on the next projects. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.